So welcome to Sunderland School Committee meeting for Sunderland Elementary School, May 15, 2018. Um, let's start with a uh, review and approve minutes. Should complete this work. 
The last paragraph on this first page explains, in our heating oil line, it appears on page five of the financial report, <coughs> there is an encumbrance there of $9,166.14, which Patty doesn't think we will need. To the best of her knowledge, all oil for the year has been delivered and paid for. So that money will be available for the repair work. So we're looking at taking $6,626.36 from the $9,166.14 left over in the oil line to pay for these sewage ejection pumps. So I'm not sure if we need a vote on it, the, but it is something that must be done. It's critical to do this work, and the sooner the better. And the money is there to support it. So um, then we move on to a less critical piece, but something you need to know about. And finally, the last piece, which we should just put on the table for all of your information. The next piece um, is related to the 10,000 gallon underground oil tank and oil delivery to bo uh, boilers. This is listed in priority, order of priority. So these are the things that we need to be thinking about. Replace defective obsolete oil tank monitor that tells us about levels and leaks. With refurbished unit for $1,500. The devices and sensors no longer are no longer manufactured, so they're manufactured. So there is some risk involved in buying a refurbished one. However, if you look closer, replacement of the entire oil tank monitoring system is 9,500. So this would be something for later discussion, uh, particularly before the winter comes. But the question lends itself to we want to spend $1,500 and use a refurbished, remanufactured one, or the $9,500 uh, to replace the whole oil tank monitoring system. This is monitoring for? How much oil is in there and is it leaking? The problem is, is we, oh, I think we ran out of oil one time this year. Let me continue. With the exception of the first item, refurbished tank monitor, None of the above projects are critical to the school's operation. They are all very important and carry some amount of risk if not completed. The school utilizes fuel oil for heating that is stored in an underground 10,000 gallon tank. The existing tank monitor is not functioning, forcing us to stick at the tank to monitor oil level and we no longer have a functioning leak monitor. We came very close to running out of oil twice last winter and the failure of the device was a continuing factor, contributing factor. These, the existing monitoring system is no longer manufactured. We can purchase a refurbished control, but the vendor cannot agree, cannot guarantee that all of the existing sensors are working. We believe that purchasing the refurbished unit has the potential to gain us a few years to budget replacement of the entire system at $9,500. The other work related to spill containment, oil lines, etc., are all prudent expenditures that relate to the large volume of oil stored underground and the delivery of oil to the whole school. So other items that they're talking about is replacement of the oil spill containment at the delivery location, uh, repipe the corroded oil lines in the mechanical room, and uh, replacement of the entire oil tank monitoring system, Insta insta installation of two monitoring wells, piping of oil line from sump tank to the oil tank, excavation of the work of the dirt above the tank, and a new 32 by seven concrete pad for $9,990. This is to make this all, I'm assuming, more accessible rather than having it be buried underground. The, the critical piece here is there's only one critical piece, and that right. is the oil tank monitor. Right. Yeah. Well, I assume more urgent, or more. Uh, yes. But for long term, in the five year plan, mm -hmm. we have been um, talking right. more seriously about this um, 
particularly with Peter online, asking, you know, coming on board, asking a lot more information. So Bob Lesko felt it was prudent to really let you know mm -hmm. some of the uh, big yeah. issues that we experienced this year. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and then on the last page, again, in order of decreasing priority, but the uh, boiler tempering pump to prevent thermal shock to boilers. So what's happening is this is a huge building and uh, they heat it and my understanding is that it's hot water that goes through the whole building, but because it's such a large building, when the water comes back to the, bo the boiler, it's cold. And the cold hitting the hot furnace causes thermal shock, and that's where we're getting those little pin pinholes that are incredible leaks. They're so tiny, but the pressure behind them has the water come out. So this project, $3,650 for two boilers for tempering pumps is related to the issues we have had in the school with the cracked boiler sections. We have had at least two incidences where the boiler sections have had to be replaced due to leaks caused by cracks in the boiler sections. It is likely that these cracks were caused or at least worsened by thermal shock to the boilers. Adding this component to at least one of the two boilers is recommended. If at some point one of the two boilers is replaced by a high efficiency, high efficiency modular boiler, as proposed, which is $75,000, these boilers would not require this modification. So we have um, a situation where we have priorities to the, the, real, you know, fit the real facility of the school, not just walls and rugs and you know the real infrastructure of the school and the the sewage ejector pumps must be done that's critical it looks like we have the money for that but the other two are for your i guess your discussion and your information um i think then you probably have a better idea of the um the oil tank monitor that is quite necessary. It's not critical, but it's, uh, I would use like the a level just below critical. Running out of oil, when the kid, if they come to school and we find out the school's like 60 degrees and we have children in classrooms and, um, and certainly not being able to you know, look for leaks or be aware of leaks. So the question there is do we want to spend 1,500 on a refurbish monitor that may or may not work. It can't be guaranteed. So we've got, so just do the math here a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we got the 9166. Yeah. And I don't know if there's any, you know, if there's anywhere else we're at where, you know, that's to the good. I don't know if there's anywhere else that already that's going to be offsetting that to the bad. But soon, soon not for the moment. We'll be looking at 9166. Minus the, the quite urgent uh, six to eight thousand. Six to eight, right, right. Yeah. No, so it's, it's sixty six hundred. So, but, but also we already paid the one eighty and the three fifty. Right. So the total is seventy one hundred to seventy two hundred. Yeah, seventy one fifty six. So right, two thousand ten dollars left over. All right. I'm still So I mean, you know the. Honestly, of the the next two things, the because um, we've already experienced what happens with those, how much water can come out of those little tiny cracks and the damage it can do. I mean, I, would, I mean, on the one hand, I feel like hopefully it's not in the too distant future that we move to a more efficient boiler, but in, in the meantime, mitigating that risk. I mean the. The oil tank thing, I mean, you know, it's not the best solution, but to continue to monitor it, to do the manual for the moment. And, um, right, and with it being on automatic delivery. Correct. I think that's um, a, right. That's, that's an important piece. So that we don't, right. I, I learned that lesson after getting yelled at a couple of times by the rest of my family. Oh, likewise. Yeah. So, 
yeah, but oil might go down. I want to be able to make sure I'm getting it at the right moment. <laughs> oh, we don't have hot water? Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I digress. Um, so, I, I mean, I, my, my inclination would be to do, to, to now, to, to, to do the first and hunt till June and maybe get a little more on the final picture. If, if this seems reasonable, then you know, if there's other reasons not to punt for a month. Mm -hmm. But to, to June on the rest, to see what what a real, like, what it looks like, what else might, either we have more room to shift or not. And by the way, I mean, we don't, we don't do a line item budget, so I, I don't know, technically, I don't know that we have to vote this. I think it's good practice that we do, regardless, mm -hmm. um, so. We're looking for guidance from the school committee, right, right. and we also want that. the school committee, uh, especially when they're with the town or doing capital uh, meetings, to understand that these issues right. are yep. important. I agree. I'm sure. The whole stuff is what it is. Right? It's on the uh, the sewage. Right, right. But for for the uh, oiler and the oil, there's a little bit of uh, well, if you wanted to throw in big money now. You could save the cost of the band-aid, right? But if you, you know, if you want to buy the band-aid, you buy yourself some time, right? Um, right. In both cases, and especially. I mean, I think. Um, yeah, and I, and again, I, if we could come up with the uh, thirty-six fifty to do one of the two boilers, um, and then. And presumably, so then that's the boiler that's being used. The other one's a backup, right? And then, so then we, there are some risks of, of more flooding, you know, another round of flooding. Right, and the cracked section of the boiler would cost more than running out of oil. Yeah. Right. It's amazing to me that a system was built that yeah. cracks, but well, that being said. <laughs> why, yeah, why do we have a how old is the sewage sewage ejector system? Is that it does when the school is built building? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it, right? It's right. been well, it's not, it was built in what about that? Uh, <coughs> my first question would be why did we have a system that used galvanized pipe and it does not hold up? Yeah. You know, that was no brain. Yeah. Why, where, where did but that decision come from? We can't do anything about that now, so. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. There was somewhere else, I believe it was in Conway, where the, uh, the pump lining needed to be replaced in something about, or in Whaley, I can't remember, but it was the steel in the 80s was coming overseas or something and it wasn't that the same high quality and it is starting to show uh, up in places but galvanized I don't know because clearly it's corroded and it, it, they can't even lift it out to do the work. If they lift it out now you'd want to replace those rails so it could be easier to lift out to do that work. And that has to be done because the alarm's going off or is this? It it's sounds like the alarm going off is a symptom of, of oil flowing. Right. It's it's somewhat stable now. They were here working on it mm -hmm. last week. Um, but I'm actually not sure if the alarm is still. I mean, if you, if you pump it out to get rid of it as opposed to the normal flow. Right. It... Yeah, you can have a defective system, but just because you pump it out, you don't have a problem until yeah, it fills back up again. Exactly. Um, my thoughts are that I. I guess we have to go ahead with the uh, sewage ejection problem, number one. Number two, um, I, my concerns about uh, any immediate action with either the oil tank or the boilers are both uh, that I don't know at this point what the status of our budget is for the remainder of this year and not knowing that it becomes hard to know whether this 
where this ranks as a problem or a priority uh, because we don't know what, to what extent we might or might not have problems in the overall budget. Uh, so that, uh, and with Patty, you know, very legitimately not here because she's got, a, you know, she's doing professional development stuff, which is what she should be doing. Um, I don't feel like we have anything like the information to, at this point, move forward on either one of those. Um, my sense of the oil tank problem is that, well, what we used to have an underground oil tank, and we had a big long stick, and we stuck it down there every so often, but we also kept good records about how much we used, and if you, you know, we were basically only filling it up once every summer. Well, that was the idea, as long as we didn't run out, but my understanding was that you didn't have this under automatic delivery. Um, and I guess the question is, you know, the oil company likes to come and deliver as much as possible at one time. It's more efficient to them. But we could certainly get them on a program of coming to deliver it when basically the thing is no no less than a third full or something like that. So there's no risk that we're going to run out. Right. Uh, and, you know, not be paying more for the privilege. You know, we've got a contract for oil delivery, and um, if they have to make an extra trip to make sure we're never running short, well, I think that shouldn't be a problem. Um, I find my, I mean, you know, this is not a school, <laughs> but, you know, just for the home, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the um, service that we use are pretty good about, you know, about it. They tend to deliver when it's in that, like, you know, quarter to eight range very reliably. They, they, yeah, they I have, think we they have a good sense of our history and, like, what the weather's been. My, con know, so my concern about spending the, getting the refurbished unit is that, you know, what it really adds is the leak monitoring too, but it's not even clear from here that the sensors are working enough that that would be yeah. actually providing information if there was a problem. So I'm a little bit, I'm certainly leery to go ahead and do that until we have a real understanding of what the, uh, the year's financial picture looks like, and I don't see any reason that I mean, we, yeah. we can't put that one off until next meeting, certainly. Both of these. And then the yeah. third one, yeah. and actually the second one, too, I, you know, I would, it's worth getting Mr. Lesko over here to, you know, make sure we understand and, you it's know, and what, they, what, the, what the concerns are, what the risks are, what the alternatives are as to whether, you know, putting something off is... You know, smart or stupid, or uh, putting a band aid on is that smart or stupid? Uh, we're not going to be finding 75,000 for the high efficiency modular boiler, you know, in the next few months. Yeah, um, yeah. So, that, yeah. that opinion, I mean, he, if he needs to be, if he can be here, then great. If not for June, I would say at least like a good opinion about that. Right. Um, yeah. um, and and I, he, he will be here if, okay. if that's what you request. I think he wanted to just address it yeah, for that first blush so you can understand what he's struggling with. But we always, generally in June, we look at what might be left and then what kinds of things we'd like to do if there is any money left uh, that we haven't used up during the school year. And um, unfortunately, these are big, you know, bigger items. Uh, last year we did lines and, um, I don't know, floors or rugs or something. And um, this year, these, these things are important. Uh, the kids came to school on a very cold day into a very cold building. And, uh, but we have that under control now, or we, yes. we got it under control when we realized that the automated system wasn't working and so I think well, it's not an automatic so now it's, automatic automatic delivery. Delivery. it's not automatic delivery and we yeah. have we realize that if we're really worried we gotta go stick a long stick down there yeah right so okay. um, but I think that he would he would come and present again um, he struggles with saving money but on the other hand there's always a risk involved if you get a refurbished product 
But the item is 30 years old, so do you want to put $10,000 into an item that you may? We don't know, but maybe two, three years down the road, uh, we could do a capital improvement for a $75,000 boiler. I, I don't know. But if we have already put 10000 into it this year or next year, then that takes away from what we could do later. But if we put 1500 um, in now and take that risk, but then we'd be throwing away the money if it doesn't work. One, so. one question. I, I just want to again remind that there, um, there has been a uh, group here doing the examination of this building as well as all the buildings in town. Uh, their report is due, I was told it was going to take three, four months and the work was being done in I think March, April time frame, April time frame, something like that. So there will be uh, the, uh, the report and recommendations from that group that will be on the table. Um, and because that is a audit of all the buildings in the town, then it will, you know, obviously there will be involvement of the, not only the Capital Planning Committee, but the selectmen in terms of, you know, what we're going to try and do, under what schedule, accessing what sort of funds, and so to me it's like, yes, it's the building here that we're responsible for, but it's also the town's building, I've said this before, and so I expect those other parties to be um, involved in deciding how we go forward with these things, not just immediate, you know, not just immediately, but in the upcoming years, because there's both a lot of uh, real-world experience in in those folks, um, you know, very much so when it comes to building stuff, and also in terms of the planning uh, to. Uh, determine the best way of funding it and on what schedule to start funding it. So, um, you know, certainly one of the things I will do, I expect, you know, next Monday evening is take this information to the Board of Selectmen and say, hey, this is going on. Uh, just so you know, we're going to be dealing with these and who knows what other issues that the building audit comes up with and also that Mr. Lesko has identified in his stuff. And, um, you know, I mean, Sometimes we have stuff that we can't wait for the report to come out. We got to take care of, like I think the septic issue is. But then the other stuff, it's like, you know, I'm not saying we put off stuff. It's just that there's we're working on a process to really put a lot of you know a lot of good brains on to you know how we deal with all this stuff, and it's going to require some um, significant financing. Okay, but there are ways to. Do that, and there are ways to possibly get uh, you know outside money to help with some of this stuff and so on. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about this stuff a bunch, but it's not just it's not just our committee that is like carrying the whole burden here. I just I guess that's the point. That yeah, it's it's a mutual thing across other parts of the town, and so it's just you know my intention is just get them involved and educated. Yeah, right so that's helpful for that. Like yeah, so this is great for that. I'm just, yeah. just going to take this to them and say, here, you guys ought to know what's going on here. And our plan is to deal with page one. Yeah. And, you know. So we want to make a motion for. Do uh, you have any idea what, what the schedule one, is? Page one, please. Do you have any idea what the schedule is for um, doing the page one work? Are they doing it? Um, I haven't heard from Bob. Okay. No, I don't. Okay. I don't, but mm -hmm. I, I assume. ASAP. Yeah. We just wanted to, you know, yeah. we need guidance on on all of these. Um, I don't think this is a choice. And do you, I think do you have a? Could I get a an electronic version of this? Yes. Okay, because then I will send it to them tomorrow morning. Okay, because just in case, you know. Mr. Feidenkevitz is a very smart man and he deals with a lot of stuff. He deals with pipes and things like that. Okay, and if there's anything on there that, you know, causes him alarm or causes him to say, hold it, you know, have you thought about doing some this or that or who knows what, you know, just so that he's aware of it sooner rather than later. Great. Do you still want Bob Lesko to be here for the June meeting? I think it would be real useful because I think that, uh, I don't want to even 
I thought I'd like to walk down the darn boiler and have a look so we actually know what we're talking about here. I, I'm not insisting right now we go out and look in the sewage pit, okay? But I think for the boilers, it would, it would be useful for us to um, know, make sure we know what we're talking about. And I know that, you know, we were talking about the, uh, the uh, replacement of that big hot water heater that the town is now uh, appropriated funds for that is, in, I believe, in the mechanical room. Mm -hmm. And Scott Bergeron, another one of the selectmen, said, I've spent a lot of time in that mechanical room. Okay, so these are guys that, mm -hmm. you know, I think I, we got a lot more, it, 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 we got a lot more, we got a lot of experience on this committee in education. We got a lot of experience in real world building stuff. And I want to make sure we take advantage of that. So th that's great. Um, and I think that's exactly what Bob wants to put it out there, let you know. Sorry. Uh, so there's no surprises, but I I, uh, I do think the sewage thing probably yeah. needs yeah. to be scheduled sooner than later. Yeah, I just want to give a heads up right away. So we need a motion for uh, to use part of the 916614 from the oil fund to address the uh, two sewage injector pumps. I'll second that. Right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's all we had for business. Um, can I just make a couple of comments on financial mm -hmm. success the subject here? Um, I as you know, and sometimes perhaps you're dismayed by, I asked a lot of questions about the financial stuff here. Um, I actually had been meaning to, and I finally got around to uh, having just a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Patty uh, last week to talk about, um, you know, our, the way we do things and, the, and, and how we could uh, you know, keep up keep me not from getting irritated at her, keep her from not getting irritated at me, uh, have a, you know, way that, and we had a really good discussion, okay, I, I, I went on for about an hour, and um, I got a lot more admiration for her skills and her ability and her uh, devotion to doing the best job possible for this school, and I think she understood that, you know, we're basically coming from the same place, we want to make this <coughs> as good as we can and do as good a job as we can, and then, uh, what surprised me perhaps a little bit was she said that um, she actually liked the idea of me wanting to know a lot more about stuff inside the budget and how the finances work because she said that there are times when she's been in a position where she's the one that knows and so you get this bit of a feeling of sticking your neck out and if there's something wrong you haven't had somebody else just really check it. And, um, Catching it, and I know that when I used to run the finance committee, there was that same sort of feeling that you want to be sure you're right, and if you could get somebody else to check your figures, but often it's time because it takes a bunch of nitty little stuff and so on. Um, again, I don't have a job and I don't have kids to take care of, so I'm happy to do that. And so one thing, you know, when we we discussed um, how we could could go about you know, making that work, and she suggested, she said, you know, she says, I'm real busy, I come in here at six in the morning, she says, you know, I, it's a long day, so on, but when there's a committee meeting, some of the school committee, she says, you start your committee meeting at six, and my day here at the office basically wraps up at five, so I'm just sitting over there waiting uh, for the meeting, and she said, you remember the time you called me up and said, can I come in early and bring the warrant, because I wanted to look at it. I said, yeah, I felt like I was imposing. She said, no, I was delighted to do that. She says, because here was somebody that was interested, and again, I'm sitting around waiting for the meeting. So what we set up, okay, agreed to was to start out trying to see if this works, for her to come over here basically not much after 5 o'clock on the, on the evenings that we have meetings, and for me to come, and obviously anybody else in the committee would be welcome, um, to just, you know, ask whatever questions, go through stuff, whatever we can um, to, uh, you know, 
I think it'll help her, and I think it certainly will help me. And I thought that that was, and I was just delighted with her with her offer to do that. Um, so, like I say, the plan is to start doing that. You know, each time we have a meeting to, to come over, and, and anyone's welcome. The only thing I would guess is that once we get, a, if we had a quorum, I'm not really expecting people to be interested because I know you got jobs and it's hard getting here earlier. But if if we had a quorum, then we got to worry about. You know, no, you know, open meeting rules and stuff like that. So we just have to make sure those anything that you know has any kind of whiff of getting into deliberation about stuff. It's not just informative and asking quite you know questions that we then instantly table that kind right. of discussion right for for meetings. But I'm not, ex you know, I'm sort of not expecting. You know, I'd be delighted if they were more interested because again, it helps you know everybody understand stuff. But I'd like to. You know, we're going to try this. We're going to see what happens. Obviously, if it's just me and her, or me and one other committee and her, there's not a quorum, so there's no open meeting consideration. And then my anticipation would be just to give a short report during the committee meeting as to uh, stuff we may have talked about, or concerns that, you know, or either concerns or possible good things or whatever that may have been, you know, whatever, just to keep you all informed. Yeah. So um, there's that. The, the other thing that, uh, uh, we we just discussed. I guess it was more uh, my. Uh, we talked about obviously the override, okay. And um, I think that you know I want to acknowledge uh, with thanks the support of, of all the people in town uh, that voted for that. Um, it was uh, certainly not a unanimous vote, but it was more than a squeaker, and that was nice to see. Um, I think. I hope people realize that, uh, that what we're trying to do here uh, is something that uh, benefits the whole town. Um, and again, I was, you know, it, it, it was nice to see the vote. On the other hand, I discussed this a bit with Selectman at uh, their meeting last week. Um, this is not in the slightest a call for great, now we could do new spending or something mm -hmm. like that. That what this does is it helps give a bit of stability to, to the town's finances uh, without saying, hey, you got a bunch more money, okay? And so it's going to take uh, continued hard work and smart thinking to make budgets work, okay? Um, and uh, so I just think that's, you know, again, it's, 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 a, it's a real thanks to the, to, to the support of the people in town, but we got to work harder than ever to be smart about how we manage our money because we can't keep going back to that well. Um, so anyway, there's. I think that's. Let's check my notes here. Um, yeah, that's that was pretty much from my uh, meeting with Patty. I just wanted to fill you all in on. I was again. I was very encouraged by it and very much in admiration of the work she does for us. Thank you. Great. I like the idea of that, um, you know, she can make that time, Yeah. you know, I don't know how often I could make it, but I would certainly try because I think it's, you know, it's definitely. It also may well cut down the length of meetings also. Yeah. Because if we can, you know. Get some of that information up, yeah, right. clear to us going in, then right. it's easy to focus on what we really need to talk about. Correct. In, 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 so I, I, kind of, I try not to be here so we don't have a violation of open meeting law. I'll do my best. That would be Make fine. Sure. I would, that would be much <laughs> I do. We can check it, but I do think as long as we are, you know, really sticking to it being informational and not getting into, right. you know, discussions and, uh, you know, right. uh, well, we'll, deal we'll deal with that if the situation arises. Right, right. Okay, so thank you. Because I think, you know, the open meeting law is not, and, and, and I think in the, in the training program that, like, uh, that happens in November, um, you know, they emphasize this. It's not trying to um, prevent the things that make for good governance, like being informed, <laughs> right, and getting the information you need. Um, it is, but it is, you know, about, um, you know, transparency to the public, you know, so, so you know, we just we actually are sure. getting into the business right. of deciding things and deliberating and discussing and so on, and that that needs to be public. Um, and you know, in, in, in a meeting that's been 
properly and publicize and so on, so, which all makes good sense. So. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, all right. So moving to uh, public comment, uh, we have no public, but I'll just say I just just piggyback on what you said, Peter. I just you know want to express express my gratitude to the people of Sunderland for um, you know for for voting for the override that allows us to carry forward with the budget um, that we put forward to the town this year um, and not um, likely having to go back to the table on that if it hadn't passed. So very grateful for that and, and for all the folks who worked to get out the, the word about the vote um, and what the you know issues were at stake for the school. This wasn't just about the school, it was the whole town, but certainly it was significantly the school's a uh, big part of that budget. So it's greatly appreciated all the efforts and, and support. Um, uh, and yeah, like you said, it's also <laughs> just the beginning for us. So you know, the, work, the hard work continues, you know, year after year, making that optimizing what we what we do have. So, um, all right. Uh, so moving on to, um, or is there any other comment or public comment section? Uh, unfinished business. We've got our um, so first the um, discussion items. Amendment to or adoption of following policies um, as recommended by the Frontier Regional Policy Review Subcommittee and uh, NAC. It's the Frontier Regional AB 38 Policy Subcommittee. I was thinking. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I, I would need to change that. All right. So you have them all, and then um, Keith was there at the Frontier Regional meeting on last Tuesday night, and so there are a, there were three of them that we amended very, very slightly tonight. We had a 15-minute meeting, and we amended, we took out um, a line in each one, and just amended those after discussion about cell phone use by teachers contacting students. And so long as the principal knows, or the designee knows, uh, coaches, uh, drama coaches, softball coaches, these, they text students uh, if there's a cancellation or if there's a change in plans, they text parents, it's not gonna be late, whatever. So um, that, where it originally was not about, we modified that. Uh, on that, so we made an amendment on that one. Uh, social media, uh, we took out, um, so I can remember. Let's see, it was the, uh, yeah, it was the one about only through the, the district's computers. Yes. And we took that out because, again, we will be texting, and uh, the, the uh, kind of uh, came up was uh, one of the things uh, so students have your cell phone number, they know your cell phone number, but if your phone number, your home phone number is published, it's published in the phone book or whatever, or in white pages, so what's the difference kind of thing? So we uh, took that out as unnecessary, that one line. And then in school choice, we have 160 students at Frontier Regional uh, that are school choice. And uh, it says that preference will be given to resident students for certain programs or classes, and actually the way it's done at the uh, French Regional High School is by grade level. So students that are seniors get kind of first priority because it's their last year to get the classes. So um, regardless of whether you're a school choice or a resident student, you're a senior, you're graduating, you need that credit for that elective uh, sophomores, if you're up against a resident sophomore and school choice senior, it really and truly we would have a school choice senior take the class because the resident sophomore has two other years to make. So we took out that line so that we could be equal to all students that enter the first school. So those will be going out to you tomorrow in their um, amended form, and hopefully next month we can vote on them all. Uh, it was hard work, we did quite a few of them, but Necessary, very minor. We have we did not revamp anything. They were all very minor fixes, but just because the laws keep uh, changing and mm -hmm. the laws keep changing and, and it's kind of a moving target, 
So to maintain our protection and our understanding, there's many, many times when an administrator has to go to the policy board and say, this is the policy, and this is what we follow, this is how we run this system. So those would be voting on this. Did you want to vote? I, there was a list of all the policies that was with one of the mailings we got, and it had a bunch of them, like about 10 or 12 of them said discussion and vote at this meeting, and then the rest said new ones, and they were for discussion, and then the vote will be held at the June meeting. Do you want to vote on that first set tonight, or you want to vote on everything at the June meeting? I would say vote on everything in the June meeting. Okay. Um, Didn't seem like there was any reason to vote faster on the first group. Yeah. No, what, and, and how like Frontier does it, uh, they've had plenty of time to study them. And of course we asked for questions at the joint meeting in April for mm -hmm. both of them. But we did in May do several, which those are the ones listed there. And then tonight we did three. Mm -hmm. So uh, unless there's any really outstanding questions, they kind of just, they just kind of vote them up. <laughs> you know, vote well we can do, yeah, we can do that in June, we can just, yeah. See if we have any, if there's any concerns with any particular one, and if not, vote as a group. Greg, are you happy with how things stand? Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's a little back and forth, you know. Uh, what does the administration want? As long as it's not uh, offensive to the sensibilities of the community, we uh, try to find language that supports what they want to do their jobs. And, uh, and um, my understanding is uh, that uh, Principal Modesto went through these, all of these. Uh, policies with the MTA, uh, the Frontier Regional MTA president. So they've all passed muster for, by the union and by the administration and by the subcommittee and of course by the MASC, the Masters Associate School Committee. So I think we've done due diligence on them all. We're always open for suggestions. You yes. have one. Oh, good. Thank you. It, it seems to come up, and I don't know if it got, um, came to any conclusion with Frontier, but it was GB1 about the compensation. So does that have an effect on Sunderland? Was that for Frontier only? The compensation for work done outside of the, um, so when you're doing, um, so some people get compensation, even in Sunderland, if they are part of, uh, like a team leader uh, for like leaders across the union. So like I'm a fifth grade team leader, so I'm, I get a stipend for being the team leader of all the fifth grade teachers in the, in the union. I think it was the longevity. Yeah. That's what they had in the real, and it was tabled. Oh, yes. I don't know if, they, if there's been any movement on that. No, we're not touching that uh, because the upshot was, were you looking for some of those? We, I was around for some of them. Or four entire hour and a half meetings on us. We tabled it because the goal would be to have a subcommittee commence in the fall to really go through that non union, uh, it's, it's not a contract, but it's a non union <coughs> policy procedure and have them really look at it because we started out with longevity, but then it got kind of mixed in with vacation days and then sick day buyback and then all of these other pieces. And then um, one day, one time we invited Patty to come to the meeting and she kind of gave her perspective and uh, one of the committee members had a different perspective. So that kind of thing was, let's take that out of these policies because it's not really, it's more of a procedure. GB1 is a procedure and there's a number after it. So that, the goal would be, and I hope it happens, that in the fall, a new subcommittee is formed just to look at that, those non-union employees. And those are school secretaries, uh, custodians, um, the bookkeepers, the accounting people that work in the office, receptionists. Okay. So my understanding of some of the concerns brought up was some, around the idea of doing budgeting Finances through policy that that should go through um, the financial aspect rather than just be 
Right. So the agreement or the um, the table to the fall is to have it done before December, before we start the new budgeting. Although what we have budgeted, we made what we had proposed impacted maybe four thousand dollars across the entire district. Right. And so each school maybe had a thousand or two thousand at the max impact. But um, it would have been too late anyway this year to do it. We would have waited till next year anyway. But then it opened up like a Pandora's box with all these other issues and like a chain reaction. So we said, let's have a subcommittee just work on that in the fall and before the budgeting. So it's been, to, to her point, part of the issue is it's not just the, the non union stuff, but it's also making sure that the union and the non union, everyone's sort of on the same level and uh, that there aren't any time bombs built in in terms of the ability to sell back vacation at the end of a long career or something like that. So it is a bigger task to sort of, when there are policies that impact financial stuff uh, and the two can't be unmixed, uh, try to try to make that level so that the, the non-union and the union and everyone is playing by the same. And uh, in addition to that, there was a lot of discussion of other town employees mm -hmm. not necessarily having that right. same Opportunity. So it's my understanding that, <laughs> that when we vote these policies as a group, that will not be in it. It should not be in there. Yeah. But I can I'll double check that uh, because I want to be sure I'm saying the right thing. But I do not believe we came to any conclusion or any resolution on GB or GB. Okay. I didn't see it in the list all the stuff that was sent out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a real fine. Uh, there's a, there's a real fine detail in there that we really need to look at. And of course, next year, too, your CBAs are all going to have to be renegotiated as well. So. Wow. That's not too early. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Thanks. So, thank you. <coughs> we have both on the uh, agenda, but any um, objection to tabling that to do it as a group of June? Oh, that sounded like what? Yep. Yeah. Good recommended. Great. Thank you. I do see, if I see an error, do we want to um, identify that now prior to, um, for school council, uh, BDFA B. Um, it says the school council shall meet quarterly, which is the amendment. And then on BDFA E3, the school council shall meet at least once monthly during the school year. Yeah, that needs to be changed to quarterly, so let's do that. Um, E3 is a procedure, it's not a policy. But we'll change that yeah. to December 1st. Yeah. Yeah, E3 is a procedure, it's not a policy. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can't meet. I mean, you run out of things, We vote the policy, but but it'd be good to have it. Yeah, oh yeah, and the procedure will say the same word. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure why yeah. it does. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, new business. So discussion and vote on increasing the cost of school lunch. So essentially. Um, the school lunch now is 285. We'd like to put it up to 295. And the reason that we need to do that is uh, the reimbursement for free and reduced lunch, for free lunch, the federal cost, or the federal reimbursement cost is $2.92. We cannot legally charge less than what the federal government is willing to reimburse us, or else we have to pay back that money to the federal government. So we recommend putting this cost of school lunch up to two ninety five to be three cents more than the two ninety two the federal government is re is uh, reimbursing us for free and reduced lunch. And we, we do need to that. And that would be effective with the start of the new August school year. Next, August twenty ninth, two thousand raise the the price for the school lunch from two eighty five to two ninety five. So, uh, so I'm trying to remember now the history of our on this. We 
we went to two meetings. Like, was it two? You think it was a couple years ago? Yeah. Yeah. In two years, I believe, from reading old minutes. Right. And that was the increase was from. That's when we went from. Was it also a ten cents? It was 275. 275 to 285. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's basically uh, right in line with what inflation is. A little, higher, but, but a little bit faster than inflation. Well, if inflation's around, is about just about but, 2%, and 2% on not quite three bucks would be five cents a year, and we're doing 10 cents in two, over two years, so it's right about yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but also, I mean, we are required to, you know, the federal federal government's got its number, and we actually do get in trouble if we. Yeah, yeah no, we don't. I don't think there's much of a. So <laughs> we don't want to uh, have to budget in for reimbursing. Reimbursing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I just wanted to get yeah. clarity. And I think it clearly makes sense to do, you know, the nearest nickel rather than yeah, you know, going to the exact penny, driving nuts. Do we know how close we are to the requirement for everybody to get Oh, I honestly, you know, there are districts. I think Chickabee and Holyoke, yeah. everybody gets uh, mm -hmm. lost and they, everybody gets free lunch. No question, it's lunch is provided. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not think any of our other schools are, and I don't think that we are, we're about 50% yet in free and reduced lunch. And I don't think that that is quite high enough. But uh, I, I, we could certainly look into what the percentage is. That would be such a boost to all of us. Yeah, I mean, cool. Yeah, as far as not with him, she's just not. Yeah, that would be interesting to <coughs> Health and safety standards, 
uh, food allergy prevention. So what this is is that the person that would be the cafeteria team leader would get a little bit more per hour than the uh, regular cafeteria worker so that they have a little bit more responsibility and uh, when the food service director isn't able to be here, that person is the one that is essentially in charge. It's like the lead teacher when the principal is out of the building. And, uh, I'm not positive who that person in Sunderland would be, but the idea is we're asking the school committees to vote for the position. It's a new position. We need to bring new positions to the school committee. They would get their pay. I'm thinking it's 15, 15 to 50 cents more an hour, depending on where they are now and uh, where they are. Has this brought the brought before the other elementary school committees and have they voted on it? It has. It, it's been brought to all the elementary school committees. It was introduced in April, but I don't know, there's a technicality because in, for instance, in Deerfield and Waitley, it wasn't put on the agenda the same way it was here. So we have to wait till June to vote on it. Uh, the, our, our agenda states that there's a vote. Conway's agenda will state that there's a vote for the position. But the other two, it didn't go on, it didn't go through as a vote. And it just was like an introduction to it. So we didn't uh, get to vote, but it's just, that's a matter of semantics. We all saw it in, a, in April. We assumed everyone would be voting, but. Can I, um, how many cafeteria workers are there? Three. Um, and the assumption is that it would be one of those three. I mean, we're yep. not, you know, we're not going out to replace somebody to find a team leader or something like that. And one of those, yeah. uh, certainly, I mean, do you have someone in mind, or? Yes. Yep. Well, we kind of have her yeah. right there, yeah. Okay. Um, Allison Crochier. Okay. And also, this, like, all the salaries uh, of the cafeteria workers are paid out of the revolving fund, mm -hmm. so that that would not affect right. or has no impact on the regular budget going forward. No, no, these were all included when we, when we developed the budget. And these, and the next thing we'll be talking about are the non-union increases. And um, these are, uh, these were all included as part of our budget. But I think Peter's, Peter's point was that, it, that that kind of comes through. They come out of the, the, out of the revolving the, fund. The revolving fund. As the post cafeteria workers, their salary. Out of the, right, so the, it, only would impact us if there was if we needed to mm -hmm. supplement right. that fund as we have done <laughs> recently. But um, and actually, I one thing I did talk to Patty about was the um, status of the revolving fund because you may remember there was a there was a, a differing view as to what the status of the fund was, and I had gotten a number from the town accountant that was was significantly higher, and it seems like that's the number that we're going with, because that's real money in the bank, and so um, I asked her again if it was possible, because it seemed like if it was possible to put the food service director's salary, the sum of the part, uh, to finance that back through the revolving fund, um, let's say she took that under advisement, uh, I'll probably bring it up again. It wasn't clear, uh, you know, how easy that would be with uh, it, uh, you know, perhaps I think the, I mean, right now the, the argument was, well, the, all the towns voted to have it, you know, handled through the financial channels that put it in the regular budget rather than putting it in the revolving fund, and so it was difficult to change just this one town. Um, she did say that there are uh, certainly some things in terms of the equipment that's being used in the cafeteria, in the kitchen, whatever the proper term is, um, that having this money in the revolving fund will allow that, you know, some replacement or fixing there that won't have to come out of the regular budget. 
So that's something, but um, it's still, it's not clear to me as to whether we can also possibly shift the I, food I service director's salary back in there. It depends, again, I mean, it seems like the finances for the revolving fund are, do, you know, it seems like things are going better. So I don't know, you know, we've got to wait and see a little bit. But so my understanding is the food service director's salary, the director, mm -hmm. comes from the general budget. Right. The cafeteria workers come from the revolving fund. comes from the lunch fund itself. Correct. Right. So these people are coming, their salaries are coming from the lunch fund. Correct. And if you see the cafeteria team leader, where that person was this year versus where that person will be. And the reason why that person is going up, this is the biggest jump of all, mm. of all the schools. And mm. that is because the person beneath, or the person who is not the team leader was making that much more than, than, um, right. so we have put her up to, uh, and then they get two percent raise. So, yeah. So what she's. Do you think about that? <coughs> I mean, uh, so having done some time in the military, it's good to have one person who's sort of in charge, right? And has a designated role. Right. Sometimes there's a, a rank pay associated with that. These people work very, very hard. Why was why was the current pay so differing, differing between the three? Because it was based on steps, years in, and uh, equal. Because the uh, the food service director that you were paying for before just kept them. It was it was just based on. Um, I, I I believe the the big difference in pay to begin with was that the individual with the highest amount transferred from another school, mm -hmm. um, maybe in the frontier where the pay was a little bit higher, mm -hmm. um, and brought that salary. And are you happy with what the new arrangement would be going forward in terms of having a, 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 a efficient operation there? Absolutely. Yeah, I would support it. Okay. I think it's been working this way this year, that this person's taken this responsibility on. Right. Yeah. But it hasn't gotten the pay for yeah. it. Right. So. I, mean, I mean, I would be, you know, I'm, my sense, I would really like to have more figures, which I plan on getting, <coughs> but my sense is that the revolving fund is in good shape. Okay, the revolving fund actually could be said to be in very good shape. And, uh, but it's still a question of, on an annual basis, you know, we should be clearly running in black, okay, and I, because we're not, we don't have the food service director cost in there, but I think even with this change, we still should be running in the black. Um, I think we are pretty, pretty close to it. Um, but I don't have the numbers. So. Yeah, but she, I, I believe we're, we're, we are making gains in all of our schools. Right. And, and the last time I got a number from the town treasurer, let me look here, ending balance as of uh, May 4th, uh, 24000 okay. In the black? Or? In the, as, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, 24000 the red. Screaming, yelling, no. I'd be, scared. No, I'd be very scared. But. And he actually said that. And, and Patty's response to that was, and that number actually will probably go up a little bit because there's a delay in getting the federal reimbursements. And so, um, I mean, okay. I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not complaining about the bad standards, that's for sure. Compared to where we were, we really are making gains. Yes. It, it was a tough go um, getting uh, a consultant in and all the other people, but. In the end, uh, the upshot is all of our schools are doing much better, and we've got a wonderful food service department. So, and, and you have a now a computer system that does the sort of automatic billing and sending out notices and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and that's working fine. Yep, it's working. 
very well. Um, I had the principals meet with the Mary the food service director monthly, last Monday of every month, mm -hmm. um, she gives us a brief rundown of the financials. Um, and then any families that are carrying um, a larger balance, we get calls with uh, just to remind them of where it's at. So that's all working yep. as well as it can. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, my only, I, I, it seems completely reasonable and appropriate, um, that my only hesitation is knowing there's been a lot of, uh, you know, deliberation within the town overall um, in terms of, you know, the personnel committee um, for, you know, where, what, what compensation for different things, you know, that are, you know, where, where it seems like Sunderland's a little um, below our peers, but we've had, you know, trouble, um, uh, you know, co co you know, correcting that um, just, you know, because of the financial situation. You know, there's been also some, some pushback in terms of the information supporting it, although to me it seems like there's been a lot of <laughs> information that it's a, it's a pretty, it's pretty clear we can keep <laughs> looking for more and more research. But in any event, um, this is a little different because it's, 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 it's the one position that has more responsibility relative up to others and that. So I, I get that different context, but I just, I don't want to, I feel like my only concern is upsetting the apple cart in town with all the, you know, the, with the work that's happened on this with people who are in other parts of the town and library and what, whatnot. Also kind of to some extent on hold in terms of adjustments. I mean, there, you know, there was the agreement on the, on the COLA increase and stuff, but not, not other adjustments. Um, so I don't know if we've had any feedback at all from like the personnel committee in town or, you know, and I realize this again, you know, because it, you know, it's a little different that it comes out of the revolving fund, but, but that's sort of splitting here. So, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Want to fall back too much on that. The only thing I would say is that um, coming out of the revolving fund, the status of the revolving fund that's paying the salaries depends. Right. Is you know should be better if you have smarter, better people. I couldn't agree with running the operation. Right. I, I couldn't agree with more. So it's I, appropriate. The question is, you know, I mean, I. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I hear what you're saying too. I, I would feel that argument more keenly if this were adjusting salary uh, to make someone's compensation more fair relative to the work that they're doing. And instead, of what we're doing is creating a position that has more responsibility than has been had. So yeah, you know, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think it's the it's definitely a valid position. The food service director can't be everywhere. The, uh, the expectations now are much higher than they were under the last food service director. Uh, we've learned to streamline a lot of things due to the audit we had and then the changes that were kind of hoisted upon everyone in the fall. But these uh, position, this position is going to come with a lot more work and a lot more responsibility and no extra hours. When, so, when would this go into effect? Uh, next uh, in the fall, uh, yeah. in the fall. <sighs> and it's already. Yeah, I mean, my inclination. My, I'm I'm supportive of this. I think it's the appropriate thing to do. My my gut is. Um, uh, I'm going to be overridden if that's you know, of course, but um, is just to to um, you know. Respecting the goodwill, I feel like that's been built up between different departments within the town and all the work that went that we all jointly did together uh, to to um, try to support the, the budget that we have and get the override that would allow us to support it. I hate to compromise any of that by not just kind of doing the due diligence of, you know, maybe just going through and making sure that that, that this you know if it's, it's check with the personnel committee and say hey, 
you know, this is a situation, it's not like we're just, we're bumping our, all our, I mean, obviously we're not bumping any of the other ones, we're just doing this one, it does reflect the job, but I'd still rather do that and then, and, and, and pass this in June. Um, would you, and with the, you know, that any, would be my. Are there any comparable jobs in town that the personnel committee could? Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> potentially, I mean, that's what I, you know, that's my, you know, I, I wouldn't want, you know, here then, you know, even the town office or in the li or in anywhere where else, it's like, well, this person also has takes has these extra responsibilities, but we just haven't been able to pay them more. I don't know that that's true. Um, again, I just feel like in the spirit of like in this together, um, um, just to be a little bit. Where did the hourly number come from? Here? There is a step. Um, there is a page behind it that talks about the salary schedule, and these are the steps of all the people in the union that are engaged in this, um, in the food service. So this person is now at step two, and the other person is still at step one, and then the new one is even below that, or the, uh, the, this one is a part-time, she only works two hours a day, so. Uh, th these steps are established in what we had spoken about earlier, Keith was mentioning, uh, procedure GB1. This is the non-union salary schedule that we have in place, so. But this wasn't the point of contention in GB1. This was, no, you know, this no, was no. the point of contention was vacation and sick day and sick day, yeah. yeah, long jeopardy and that sort of stuff. So, but this is what we follow because it's standard for non-union employees. And you, I don't know if you, how many of you have this um, document. Um, and again, your uh, union schools will be doing, will be following the same. They will. All the team leaders, the four team leaders, will be doing the same thing there as the one in Frontier. And uh, we need to have somebody with their feet on the ground, with that extra responsibility, to make sure the show goes off every day without a hitch. Um, this is just a matter of doing business appropriately. When you uh, are, when you're an administrator and you can't be there, you have a a lead, a team leader. This person runs the, the actual program every day. So the food service director comes in, checks in, makes sure everything's, you know, and then leaves. This work is done by your team. You need to have a team. Yeah, yeah. someone needs a badge. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the A is a question. I mean, maybe I'm being overly sensitive to the, I, I just, I just, I, you know. I don't think that there's anything wrong with waiting until June. We don't have to have this done now. So if we want, we can do due diligence. I look at it this way. Um, this, I think it is important that this is coming out of the revolving fund. This is coming out of the money that is generated within right. the school that we just raised. Yeah. And this is less than I pay my wife for Christmas. I, I, I get it. Right. That, that, to me, I'm like looking at this like, Yes, this, these are the people that handle food for our kids every single day, and it's not as much as I'm paying the college kids. I think we can do that. I would hope so too. I'm I'm supportive of it. I just I feel like in good faith to, to just kind of can you do complete diligence and then bring it on and we vote everything. Okay, so you're going <laughs> to table this until June, and you're looking for more information. I just like to consult. In, oh, you in want to consult with the. Um, do you want me to run before selectman next week? Sure. Okay, then let me just make sure I just got a couple. And really, and, and if there's a way to get it to the uh, person. Well, one of them, I mean, there's again, each selectman has responsibility for certain committees, and right. so I think, I think it's Dave, David, Dave, David, David, he's the one that knows everything about what's going on. on the person, yeah. committee, so. And to put him in, to give him the context, this is why it's not like we're just right. arbitrarily. So what, what step would this put her at? Two. Um, so this is what the, uh, and I'll give this to I you. I saw that right. I just and then OVP, you <coughs> see the step two? The step two? Oh, here it is. Yep. Uh, yep. I got it here. Okay. And then step one. So the second lieutenant is step one. So, so then I guess I've got to ask, because there's somebody on here 
the third one on she's only a two hour this hour. list and so she doesn't qualify for no, being on the she's step. Not on a step this is for you know full-time employees but the uh the second lieutenant is a step one and the captain is a step two. and how long has allison been working in our cafeteria she's been this is her third year i believe but i think that the steps that is only for the team leader position is that? Yeah, I believe so because there, there, there's a difference in. Okay. So, so, so um, right. and again, the other person, the second lieutenant, came from another school where the salary was a little bit higher. Frontier. Right. Um, and the justification for step, I'm just trying to anticipate questions. The reason for picking uh, step two was that. As a cafeteria team leader, she has more responsibilities. Okay. I mean, obviously, we're talking at the bottom end of the step, step schedule here, so. But you felt like it appropriate to bring, so when you hire, right, some somebody, I mean, when, with teachers, right, they'll sometimes come in at, when you bring them in, experience. experience, really. Right. And so what's her experience? How many years has she been doing this? She, this is, I believe, her third. Okay. I don't know where, yeah. where she came from. But All I know is currently she's doing in fact. And was she yeah. doing food service before she came here? No. Sure. Okay. One okay. question. It's kind of procedural. Um, are these salaries uniform around the district? From school to school to school? I'm just wondering. It sounds like not even. Yeah, so I'm wondering. Well, and I'm not trying to like really go at somebody's pay. Why would somebody from Frontier come here and then get their Frontier pay here if we have a different pay schedule? We can't pay somebody less. I know what you. I know what you're saying, and that happened to lately too. They move out of Frontier, and they and they have great skills, and we continue at their salary that they have in Frontier. That was a a practice that was established before my time. So they come with these great skills, but then they they don't take a cut and pay to come here. Um, it, it is. Is it there is, any difference in the job description or? Expectation between the elementary school and the high school, and that would is it uh, is it a higher volume at the at the high school? Yeah. And, I, and I don't want to go down really down the road, but is it something it, we can is. work it's at the high school and then get out of there? So for a little? when you take into consideration even the CBAs for the Union Thirty Eight schools and the Frontier Frontier Regional teachers get paid more right. than the Union schools. Um, the in the cafeteria it is it's more volume it's more cooking they have many more options many more uh, entrees they also have salad bar and all these other things they're preparing so the job is is a little bit more um, uh, involved than it is here they make one you know one entree but they soup to nuts they do everything by themselves here so uh, the the uh, the union schools get a different pay than the so even when you look at GB and GB1, GB1 is for Union Schools, and GB is for Frontier Regional. They just happen to be the, um, you know, the uh, showcase of the district. They get more, they do more. I'm sure it's the same way in every district with the high school. Is. It just strikes me that there's a little bit of inconsistency. Well, between the, I can't change the regional with the Union, but with the Union, this position will be in all the schools, and this step will be for the, uh, the team leader, and it, it's a necessary step. We have to compensate that team leader. Yeah, oh, well, absolutely, that, that, that one, it's the... Regardless of what other people in some of them are making yeah. or in the town, this is a job that, if I'm doing it here, or I'm doing it in Deerfield, or I'm doing it in Conway's, it's the same right. job, depending on how many years I have in, then I go up the steps. If I've been here 30 years, or when I'm on one step, thus and so. So she's. Uh... So, like, but it would be comparable because I think you know, teachers are uh, licensed like K yeah. through five, six through twelve. So if you had somebody who was at Frontier teaching, say, sixth grade at a certain salary, and they were to come here, would they that salary? Would they get that same salary, or would they fall under the summer? So that there's a little bit of inconsistency there. Well, I don't yeah. know if they were to go down. I don't know. You're right, at the high school, they have to have the special certification. If I'm teaching science at the high school, I'm not only certified, you know, 
whatever, 712, but I'm certified in science, so I have to take a special test to be yeah. certified in science. But as far as it's there has there hasn't been a lot of movement, at least to Sunderland, from high school or middle school to the elementary school, um, as far as that. Yeah, point no, I'm just made, wondering. But I just think that there's some, it strikes me that there's, right. there's a lack of consistency. In that yeah. Area. But they do come. So I worked over at Amherst for 15 years, and so I'm on step 20 at, in Amherst. I would come here if they hired me. I would be step 20. I wouldn't lose any steps moving from school district to school district. Mm -hmm. So I think the pay stays the same, but the steps follow. Me. So if I did five years at at uh, Frontier and I came here, I'd be at step six here because I, you know, I would do those steps. Same. Those steps are the same. The years of experience. Are the same. Right, years of experience. So we have an IA that gets hired here, but has. Five years experience being a paraprofessional in Amherst and comes here as an IA, then I would be step six as an IA because I have five years experience. We don't take the experience away, but the pay is what the school pays. Yeah, whatever our step six is, not Amherst is step six. Exactly. Right. So. <coughs> and so, in effect, that wasn't done as far as the movement here of a cafeteria worker because the pay just came along with them. In that sense, as a non-union person, you might be right. I think that is what happened. It might have been a line of least yeah. resistance, sort of like. Yeah, I think that's what happened. And I mean, King's raised a good point. You know, that's sort of, but the problem is, to what extent is that water over the dam and, you know, we can't sit here and. Yeah. But also, too, I would hesitate going to the town and comparing the school salaries and steps that are established in our non-union our non-union procedures with what goes on in the town. I don't know if anyone is a, a team leader, a cafeteria team leader in the town. I don't know if anyone in the town understands the, um, the depth of the kind of work that's expected, the inventories and the ordering and the purchasing and understanding the ebbs and flows. They count out every lunch so we know what the popular lunches are, what we can do, they add. I, I don't know if anyone in the town can A, judge it, or be understand what the intricacies of the job is because I don't think there's a comparable job in town. So sometimes we talk about um, our receptionist makes X amount of dollars, but a receptionist as a town worker makes bus and so. Um, again, the jobs they sound similar, but they're they're slightly different. There's many more databases. They have to understand power school. They have to understand the divisions. They have to you know understand. So all the procedures that we have. So are the other three elementary schools, is the proposal that each of them to have a team leader pay this same amount? Same exact. Same exact amount. Same exact. Because obviously one of the concerns of the personnel committee doing, you know, a survey of, of similar towns with similar job descriptions here, we've got, you know, towns with exactly, the, the only thing here actually is I don't know if it's more work or less work if you've got more kids or fewer kids uh, in the school, but basically it's the same job as three other towns and we're paying them the same thing. Well, and that's sort of what the personnel committee has been trying to deal with because the problem is, that consistency the, problem is is the job the same? And the job, as you yeah. say, in a lot of cases, is not the same. Right. Um, so is, and has this been voted in, a, in other? In no. A, no, okay. Well, why don't we, I mean, I'm happy to wait. It's not going to make a difference here if we wait a month. Right. Okay. Sure. And then to the extent that we want to, you know, I, I mean, I got, I'm perfectly fine, you know, informing. I mean, that's, I consider, you know, part of our duty, but um, I don't think there's a case for um, really making a change in what we're proposing. Right. I, I agree, and, and, and I hope, you know, Person in question will feel like we're, under, <laughs> we're not appreciating right. the, the the commitment and the work. It's it's not about that at all. I think it's it's just a um, matter of, of practice. So the practice. If you go to the selectmen and they say, "Oh my gosh, that's a lot of money for cafeteria team leader," I don't think that's what it, I I would no. be shocked if that would be the no. reaction. I, I'm just curious as to telling them what you know. I mean, to me, it's also. I look at it as, 
And you can't say this actually about a lot of them. We could say it about some things. I mean, one of, we have a number of other revolving funds in town that people get paid to. Well, these are, for example, your inspectors. Okay, and there it's a matter of, well, if there are more inspections, they end up getting paid more. Okay, but they're supposed to be both good and they're supposed to be efficient and, you know, that's what you, you know, for the town, from the town's point of view, what you're mainly concerned is, you know, do we have inspectors that are doing the job properly? So, you know, certainly that concern here is, you know, one of our concerns is, are we getting somebody good? Okay, now if we're getting somebody good and they're getting a comparable salary to uh, other towns with, they get the same salary as other towns with the same job, and uh, there would be, this would seem to me to be moving us in the direction, in just this one item, of trying to be smarter about how we run something at the school, meaning make somebody in charge, have it a good person, so that we deal with problems that come up in a good way, we, we, we forestall bigger problems, we run an efficient operation, and hopefully the revolving fund stays with a healthy balance. Now those to me are all, you know, totally good reasons to go ahead and do this. Um, and they are, you know, it's, a, it's not, a situation that's so comparable to other non you know other non union people in town. It's a different situation, and I think it's I think it's totally reasonable to do this. But I'm also sensitive to what Doug says, and you know you just sort of like to let people know a little bit just in case. But, but if somebody said, well, I really don't like this. I would go through the same list of justifications I just made yeah. because I think it's a good case. Yeah, yeah the, the narrative behind this is also this: uh, we had someone retire suddenly, and we found that we were doing a lot of stuff sort of ad hoc. And now we have a much more structured, you know, after bringing the consultant through, we're looking to uh, align the entire district and, and have some hierarchy. Uh, so we've got someone on the ground that's lined up with the central stuff, that's able to buy stuff more cheaply or get, you know, the, the offsets and, and all the other stuff. So that, uh, unlike teachers, where it's really hard to sort of monetize the good work that they do. Right. In this case, we have this like number of meals served actually talk about the program moving towards right. the black. Right. And, and buying the commodities and just being a lot more aware of, of how we're, of what we're feeding and how we're doing it and yep. closing up those gaps. There were a lot of things that went through the past. And so we're trying to take them out. So do you want to just put a vote on the agenda for next meeting? Yes, I will. Okay. And that brings us to the non-union. Um, Again, this is just for your information for now, to be voted on in June, but we'd like to present it. This is our COLA, this is our 2% raise. This is established to go along with the CBAs. The CBA was 6% over three years. The CBA was 1%, 2.5, and 2.5. Ours has been 2%, 2%, 2%. And this is what uh, we agreed on last year, and this is the same as last year. So uh, when you look at these uh, job descriptions, especially on page two, these are the totals, but again, Sunderland only pays a portion of these totals. These district, uh, district level positions. And the 2% is the same 2% that's in the town budget for FY19. These have already been added to the uh, budget. You want a motion on this, Doug? Uh, well, you just said this, this is international. Oh, this is we're, 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 we're next time. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, uh, but any. Any discussion? I mean, we can still discuss now. Any anything you'd highlight here? Um, no, not necessarily. The only thing I'm highlighting is is these again. Okay, what you said. Yeah. Your salary. These salaries here uh, on the next page are uh, the first page are directly <coughs> related to Sunderland. The next page is broken out. Um, by student FTE and Sunderland's um, portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, 
guessing that superintendent's salary and the business manager's salary are not on here because those are subject to some separate yeah, negotiation. negotiated separately. Are there any others that are subject to, se to separate negotiation? Yeah. Questions or no discussion now? We visit in June. Okay. Right. Um, then we have amendments to or adoption of following policies recommended by MSC and, um, and it is recommended by the Frontier Regional Policy Review Subcommittee. Um, and these are. And thank you, Ash. <laughs> So again, these are not to vote this month. Anything, anything of yeah, I think what we talked about earlier. Yeah. earlier. yeah, no, we got it. Okay. Um, so then, reports. Um, any, we've got a. Uh, we've got our. Um, is that this pool improvement plan? Should we do that under? The, you want to do that under the principal's report yep. as opposed to the committee report? Okay. Any other committee reports? Yeah, can I? Yeah. A couple more things. Um, I at a recent selectman meeting, the subject came up with the fact that we'll be having a new search for superintendent, and there was a definite interest on the part of the selectman of being involved in the process. I have not been through a process of this process. I don't know what's involved. Um, I just wanted to bring that up and to, um, I don't know what, you know, other towns obviously are involved because it's a whole joint thing, but I don't know. Um, I would recommend that you bring that to Monday night's meeting okay. and have a discussion there. Okay. Uh, I think it's a really valid point. I don't know what's been done in the past. I don't know the history. I don't know. I know there have been occasions in the past where, you know, there's been sort of a joint meeting with, you know, the school committee and the selectmen or finance chairs involved to handle, you know, discuss certain matters. I would imagine those usually budgets or something. I don't know what the background is as far as hiring a superintendent. I just know that, again, talking to our board, which has been, uh, you know, doing that for a long time and has a lot of institutional knowledge and has, uh, Generally, when the board you know, concerns, meets, they, 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 you know, specifically said, boy, we, you know, we like some involvement. In so when the board meets with the joint committee, it's usually uh, selectmen and people um, uh, kind of nominated to work on the negotiations for the CBAs. Right. So, uh, but this is a really great suggestion, and I, I would recommend you bring it on Monday night be, uh, because and what do you What do you think the... Uh, you know, what, what are the possible scenarios in terms of, you know, I mean, are people going to say, well, that's a fine idea, and then move on and ignore it, or are there, you got any any thoughts as to how, what might transpire? They, at this point, they would need a, a, a strong interim, and uh, last time they did a search, you know, I was, they came and I, you know, 25 people at my previous district met for 15 minutes with them all day long. I mean, they did a real thorough search. Mm -hmm. I came with a pedigree, but uh, just didn't pan out. Right, but. So, uh, but at the, uh, I think that they have some ideas themselves, but I think new voices and new ideas are very welcome. Mm -hmm. and, if, if I may. Mm -hmm. This came up the last time around, because <coughs> was, how much parent involvement do we want? <coughs> and uh, one, perspective that was expressed that seemed to, a lot of people said, oh yeah, this makes sense, was that the school committee has very few responsibilities. One of them is hiring the superintendent, and the other is policies. And we have, uh, we have parents who are also on school committee, <coughs> so there was a thought that we should not try to widen it too much. So that's not to say the public is always welcome at school committees and the joint stuff. But it may be a, a good partnership thing where they work through the school committee members. Uh, and whether or not there would be more direct involvement, 
by the, the town entity. The hiring committee, I mean, the, the hiring committee, I'm trying to think what the composition was. I mean, it was a pretty, uh, it did pull from, I mean, there actually was parent representative, there was um, staff representatives. Uh, I, I thought there was actually select board representation from within, at least within the union. Um, maybe not every What they did was they hired um, MASC, Massachusetts Association of School Leaders, right. to lead the search. And what they did was uh, they did have a committee and there were principals, to, so, um, mm -hmm. two principals, two teachers, like, two parents, uh, several school committee people. I have to tell you, I don't remember any selectmen. Maybe not. I can't. Like maybe maybe I'm not about that. I, uh, that yeah. It was a large committee, mm -hmm. and, and so yeah. and then I interviewed once, and then um, they came to my school and visited, and they wanted to meet with uh, let's see, selectmen. They did want to meet with select people. They wanted to meet with you know administrators, principals. Elementary, middle, high school teacher, IA's custodian, um, IT director, some uh, uh, assistant principal. They met with 25 people. Uh, they even met with my next door neighbor. I mean, this is they had board members, so they met with 25 people, and uh, then I got called back as a finalist, and then I interviewed for the whole school committee. And that was the night that the elevator got stuck, and mm -hmm. David Sharp was in the elevator, and I missed my interview. But, uh, so then I was uh, elected. So, uh, but um, I mean, I think we have the joint committee coming yeah. up, where I think you know we can bring that voice to that in terms of because there will be you know a, 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 a iron committee for were any of you on the on the hiring committee last time? Pardon? Were any of yes, you on hiring committee? You were? Yes. So the, the question would be whether they will go with an interim um, or do a full out search. An intern would give them time to go back and do a really thorough search. Uh, but there, I do, I've heard rumblings that they already have a plan, so I don't know. But meanwhile, what we need to do while we're on the subject is I. Um, as you, as you know now, that I am resigning, uh, and I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity and uh, for welcoming me into your community. And I, I, I want to thank you for that. So, what I do need is a vote to accept my resignation. So, I'll vote we accept your resignation uh, with thanks for your. Service to the town. I'll, uh, I'll second, and uh, uh, before we vote, say uh, thank you for this for the service. Uh, you've been very supportive of our school. <coughs> been much appreciated. Um, I've had uh, multiple uh, comments uh, in a couple years. I've been here about uh, the appreciation. Uh, this is from uh, folks in the building and outside the building for how evident it is uh, your support and care about our school and our community and uh, you know being in the building and uh, it's very noticed and appreciated and, and um, so um, thank you and, and wish you the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Um, just to, um, further on that, um, I think it's ultimately the school committee has the decision, mm -hmm. um, but I think meeting with the select board, keeping them informed is, and doing our due diligence, I think it's an excellent idea. And I, I'm, I'm still, an eyebrow raised the whole thing because at the Frontier meeting I actually asked what are we going to be doing and I got what I felt like don't worry about it we got it taken care of 
we'll meet next week and, and we'll tell you what's happening. So I, I basically, I, I asked what's the process. Open, open, law, open meeting, meeting law, good work, working well here. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I was given no information on basically what, what the plan going forward was. It was we sent out a, a doodle. That's what I got. Right. We sent out a doodle to, to find what people meet and we're going to take care of that meeting. So I'm, 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 um, I have a level of concern and um, I'm very interested to see what's going to happen at this meeting next week. But it sounds things. like sure I shouldn't get my hopes up that, that, that I might suggest would be actually acceptable because they've already got a plan. Well, somebody's got a plan. You know, regardless of whatever plans or agendas people might have in their heads going into the meeting, if we get in there and it's, uh, you know, folks in the, in the room at, in that moment make, uh, you know, yeah. motions and decisions. Yeah. So I think um, be prepared for that. Um, I also just wanted to say I have I've been in touch, contact with Bob Lesko, you know, a couple of times went over and met with him once. This is part of dealing with getting our stuff through the Capital Planning Committee and select and so on. He was actually delighted to have someone, he said, someone, someone come over and actually take the time to meet with him. He thought it was wonderful. Um, and I sent him a thing after the override pass saying, okay, the funds are approved. I says, it would do a whole lot of good for, in our attempts to advocate for future capital project at the school if these get taken care of, you know, now, you know, rather than, you know, who knows when. And so he took that message in a proper way, mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay, it's important for us in terms of, you know, long-term goals of getting things addressed that we, when we do get funding for something, that we take care of it promptly. And so I think that's Keeping my fingers crossed, that's going to happen. Um, likewise, Scott, who I haven't met, has you know gotten the message that we've also approved the money for the security camera stuff, and so hopefully he's on the ball as far as getting that done. Um, I got a couple. Can I just ask a couple of trivial questions? I got a letter in the mail about marching in the Memorial Day parade. As an elected official, you all get the same letter, I assume. Yeah. Have you all marched before? Yeah. You plan on marching this year? Um, uh, if I am in town, <laughs> or there's some question whether I'm in town, okay. Um, uh, then uh, probably. I mean, I think it's a good idea. But I just didn't know if you know I'm going to show. If I show up, will I be the only school committee member there, or will uh, I? Have no, I'll, I'll be in a pink baseball softball jersey marching with. I've never been in town on that day. There's you plan your schedule carefully. <laughs> there's a whole, I mean, um, I think it's a, it's a great parade. It's a fun, it is a yeah, fun parade. I, I, I mean, the kids right, with the bikes. Been in the parade. The, yeah. yeah. Um, you going to march? I'll be with the T-ball team. You've all got your own allegiances. <laughs> Once upon a time, um, um, we, we all, uh, the school committee, um, um, oh gosh, I'm, I'm blanking now, it's terrible, I'm so bad with names, our uh, former principal, Tim, thank you, gosh, it's terrible. Um, Tim uh, um, managed to, uh, to uh, have a um, convertible <laughs> for the day and had the uh, superintendent with them in the convertible and we're lucky with that, but um, regardless of whether or not we have a convertible, it's, it's, it's... So do you march with a sign that says Sunderland School Committee, or do you just... I think we had, I mean, <coughs> it's very, generally, pretty low-key, just finding a place to, yeah, be a part of it, so... Okay, thank you. I'm sitting in the bed of my truck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have uh, in-laws in town through that, and there's some chance we're doing an uh, excursion with them that weekend is up in the air. But I'd love to, if, if I'm around, I'll definitely be out for the parade. It's always a good time. Um, so we'll touch base.
That's going to sound good. Um, all right. Uh, Prince, Prince Borfort? Great. Um, and before I get into the report, I also want to publicly thank Lynn for the support that she's given me and the teachers and the students and the community of Sunderland. I always felt very supported, um, able to call you at a dime's notice and appreciate all that you've done for us. So we'll miss you here. Um, principal's report. Uh, you have before you um, the school improvement plan. This has been a uh, ongoing work in progress throughout the entire year. Um, goals were actually established pretty early, um, but then with each meeting we, we tweaked them a little bit. Uh, members of the school council this year were um, staff members Rachel Kidder and Amanda Berg, community members Cindy Benjamin, school committee rep Maisie Shaw, and parents Jessica Corwin and Keely Malone. The first three goals of the school improvement plan are based off of this uh, district's strategic uh, improvement plan. Um, those are curriculum and instruction, assessment and data analysis, and special education services. Um, working towards those goals this year, we formed an in-house strategic team committee, and that's um, made up of teachers, and we've been meeting on a monthly basis to um, look at the structures and systems we have in place here at Sunderland as a whole, and then make recommendations um, to the staff moving forward. Uh, the following goal, the other goals are positive student behavior, school environment, school and community, and going green. A couple of these were also included on the um, last school improvement plan, um, but the committee felt that they were very important and like the progress that we were making with them, so we decided to um, vote to keep them on as well. Uh, the second part of the improvement plan, you'll notice just the, uh, the bullet items listed, listed under each goal, and those are um, various things that we have been doing, are planning to do, um, or have completed. And so that's the plan. Any, any questions? What's to, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so with um, under the assessment and data analysis, so the new report cards is a is that a plan to we put in new report cards um, a couple of years ago, um, and then additionally we are looking to. Um, we've met with, um, there's different data tracking systems, um, ESPED, and we met with um, uh, ESPED representatives during the, uh, last, during the last meeting to, and they showed us an RTI tracking, uh, response to intervention, um, data tracking system that they have that kind of falls in line with ESPED. But then we've also looked at our, our current student databases, PowerSchool, and we found that when, when teachers are entering their grades, entering assessments, we are going to be able to most likely create um, a link off of those assessments where all the student data that's entered is put into one spreadsheet. So um, when we're plugging in specific assignments, we're, we're going, to be, going to be able to get real-time live data about where each student is individually, academically, for a certain concept or skill, and then be able to um, plan groups, um, academic groups, accordingly. So that's um, something else we'll follow. <coughs> um, the, the list, the bullets under each goal, it's not all-encompassing, uh, all so there's other things that are taking place as well. The new report cards, when he speaks to the new report cards, may I, I just sure. Uh, yeah. um, they're not the kind of report cards where it's A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. you get a grade for it. It's, it's actually a standards based report card, and it talks about mastery or near mastery of the standards that are set by the, the, uh, the curriculum frameworks for the state of Massachusetts. And it tells parents on each, it's identified each, um, yeah. each strand whether they're mastering it or they're near mastering it. So it's not, that's what the new system. 
So I'm glad you mentioned some medical stuff because for the goal two for me that strikes me as reporting out to parents, not necessarily the teachers using the data. So to hear uh, the assessment practices that you were talking about does inform a little bit more. Um, the one thing that how long has our school been used? This is the first year. Right? This is the first year. First year, yeah. So the only thing that I would, um, because I use Power School, I really do like it. Mm -hmm. Real time, it's a little bit of a lag it, because it does take time to assess and then actually data entry. Right. Stuff. But one thing that's come up, and this, this is more, and I, don't, I don't know if this is the high school level, but it was the, uh, there was specific contractual language about the amount of reporting days. It used to be you, know, you have to report, crops reports halfway through, and then at the end, there was a minimum two to the, and there was some pushback that requiring people to update power school on a weekly basis or by a break. That's a recording, and you have to be careful. And I guess, I guess real time may have been the wrong yeah. phrase, but we, we are looking to, we, we will be holding multiple data, data meetings throughout the year, um, whether it be quarterly or um, uh, through trimesters like the report cards are currently now. Um, and that will help us form groups and inform instruction from there. Is this formally like a, a multi tiered system support type approach? Or? We're actually meeting on that tomorrow. Um, we had another um, special education task force um, separate from the school based team that met at, at the district level. And we'll be getting a um, report from them tomorrow on the MTSS, the multi tiered system of supports. So we'll be moving towards that a little mm -hmm. bit as well. David, mm -hmm. intervention. Intervention. That's good. Yeah. Any questions? Does this require action by the school committee? Um, the school committee, we'll look at the policy. So I think we, it's like once every yeah, they, few years that we we need to approve it, I guess. Yeah, approve the school, school committee needs to approve it, um, and that the school improvement plan is in place, and this is in the policies here, um, prior to July 1st of the upcoming I mean, school year. I feel like it's been like a once every year basis or something that we. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's every. We've, we've been presenting the school improvement plan on an annual basis. Right, right, but right. voting it. Been voting it on any basis? I don't think. I don't feel like that's right. I feel like we voted it like on a. Well, this would be this would be a new one. This is because the other one ran through. Okay, this is not. Okay, this is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I do think we have actually in the past voted. You know, in a, in a in a. Um, I mean, the, the school council is is separate from the school committee, so. But we've, we've just sort of endorsed in a sense mm -hmm. that. Um, so I, I would say we do that again since we just got this. Do that, next do that in, in June. Like, um, to, to, to just to vote to, to acknowledge and endorse the school council's plan or something. Do you want to vote on this in June? Yes. Okay. I think we need, I think we should, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have your hands ready for June. Yeah, I <laughs> know. <laughs> Thank you. I do have a question. I think it would fall under goal five, but I don't necessarily see it. Um, how would the um, parking lot meeting today go? Mm -hmm. Went well, and I was going to touch on that too, because that was on the important dates list. Did, did I jump ahead? Um, so there was no public comment at the parking lot meeting, just like there was none tonight. Um, the meeting today was myself. Chief Benjamin and Chief Dimitropoulos, so it's just the three of us. Um, I showed them the uh, PowerPoint presentation that I presented to the selectmen um, a couple weeks ago. And uh, the purpose of the meeting today was to come up with a set list of things to bring forth back to the selectmen of um, initiatives that need to happen in the parking lot. So we are going to recommend adding two crosswalks um, that the sidewalk that runs perpendicular to the flagpole, the spaces cross the little pull-through area from the, from the flagpole, 
that area has a sidewalk, but no crosswalks connected. So we're, we're going to look at add crosswalks there. There needs to be crosswalk signs throughout the parking lot. We are going to add a sign um, for the roundabout that goes in front of the school that says buses only, emergency vehicles only. We are going to re recommend repainting some of the lines. We are going to recommend replacing some of the worn signs that have um, just faded over time or have been damaged by plows. And then um, a big part of our discussion centered around the afternoon drop off or afternoon pickup, excuse me, and the kind of log jam that we have created. Um, since the last meeting, I've done a little bit more research and found one school that has a specific pickup area for students and cars file into that pickup area, um, turn, off, turn off their cars, shut the ignition, and when it's time, all students, all the cars that are not running, go to their parents' vehicles, and then when the go sign is given, the cars file out. We looked at, we talked about creating two lanes inside the main area of the staff parking lot that would stop right in front of this library area. And the cars would pull in, shut off the vehicle. At 3.05, all the students walk out to the cars, and then the cones are removed. Lane one pulls out, and then lane two pulls out. That was a suggestion. We're still not sure if we want to go forward with that. Um, that are currently parked. Yep, it would. Um, and then we would leave the spots that are in the middle, um, the ones that run parallel to the flagpole and the ones that run perpendicular to the flagpole for the early childhood families. And any families that have students in um, preschool and then upper grade, they would be allowed to park there and the oldest student would meet um, their family in the preschool. So there's still a lot of um, things to work out. If we were to go this route, we would try to implement it um, on a <coughs> basis at the beginning of next school year, rather than um, starting you know, with a little, not too much time to plan left in the school year. So it's something to consider. We've looked at all other options of having the pull through lane by the flagpole, and during the winter months, that doesn't seem as reasonable for a lack of available space for the students to stand in that grassy center island. There's just, there's not an easy answer without creating an additional parking area. We've all, we also talked about creating some small area of staff parking out back, and that's currently where um, our lunch personnel and custodians park, and that would be a small slab of pavement that would be put into the grass area they park on now, which would create possibly 10 plus 15, 16 spots that would create more room for families in this area. So a lot of discussions have been had and I think it's going to be ongoing. Um, but as far as the pickup question, we're still not exactly sure where, what we want to do with that. So one thing that seems to be off the table is stagger finish time. No, it's not necessarily off the table, um, but realistically, some research I, I've done, the this, this staggered times are more than five minutes, they're more than 10 minutes, right? So you can't, we can't say all students in grades K through three are picked up at three o'clock, and then all students in four through six are picked up at 305, and that would be asking parents or whoever's picking them up to leave their house exactly on time you know, with, right, it's not, that's not going to happen. Um, so if, if we are looking to stagger time, we would probably need it closer, the first group to be picked up closer to 3 o'clock and the second group to be picked up closer to 3.15, but, if, but then we're talking about contractual hours for staff as well. Um, so I don't know what that answer, that answer is. I remember at the second meeting that they commented at some point when we were talking about the need for signage that the highway superintendent could get involved in yes. taking care of that. So 
So I'm going to present the recommendations back to the selectmen and then get in touch with George Emmerich, okay. who's the site highway superintendent. Um, during the meeting this afternoon, we measured the distance from one side of the staff parking lot um, where the car, where the front of the car faces, you know, out to the soccer field, to the other side where it faces the um, the little roundabout area, and that's 60 feet. Um, so if you have two cars parked and however much space that takes up, 15 feet or so, 15 to 20 or feet, then you would have another 20 feet approximately in that middle area for two lanes. And that's during the summer months, or the non-snowy months. So the parking lot does shrink considerably during the winter. If anyone has a recommendation that would work, please bring it to the uh, to our attention. <laughs> Any other questions on that meeting? No? Um, fifth grade cafe sun tomorrow. Our kindergarten is also going to the Durfee Conservatory at UMass. This Friday, uh, we have our staff appreciation breakfast and lunch sponsored by our PTO. Uh, earlier in the year, I talked about a couple different residencies that were taking place. Um, the second residency is the Dexter and the Dinosaurs, and that's being put on by a local theater company with our third grade. On May 22nd, we have our dining out for the PTO, uh, Bub's Barbecue, barbecue and that's on the 22nd, 23rd PTO meeting. Our community service day is Friday, May 25th, Sunderland in Action Day. Um, most of our projects this year are taking place on campus, however, we do have um, our second grade students heading over to the town library to perform some projects uh, both inside the library and on the grounds. Our fifth grade students are heading over to the New England Health Center, um, the nursing home across the street, um, to do a few projects there as well. Um, in addition to those, our sixth graders usually do the walking loop um, that takes us down the access road past Millstone and picks up trash along, along that route. And then there's a bunch of other things that are taking place on campus as well. The sixth grade dance is that evening. Um, the SES Spring Concert is May 29th, and that uh, features our fifth and sixth grade chorus and our strings and band programs. Our grades five and six are going to Boston. We have our, um, walk in, our spring walk and roll to school day, and each year we seem to have more and more families and uh, both students and parents walk or roll to school. Uh, PTO is sponsoring the Tanglewood Marionettes. We had them a few years ago for one performance and they're coming back to perform Cinderella on May 31st. Kindergarten visitation day, field trips, our junior Olympics, sixth grade step up day is June 5th. Um, sixth grade graduation is Tuesday evening on June 12th, starting at 6.30. Um, in regards to the school's 300th performance uh, for the town's 300th celebration, we have been working very hard as a staff and student body to prepare for that performance. Um, it's going to feature an ongoing narrative of a grandmother and her two grandchildren and she's going to be giving them a um, kind of a, a history of the town of Sunderland. There's going to be skits mixed into that, um, that ongoing timeline, as well as grade level student songs. So we've been practicing those skits. And um, that's Spring Carnival is on June 20th, and Field Day is on the 21st. So lots going on. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else to report today? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn with a good, healthy, healthy buffer before tip off. I mean, whatever else people might be doing this evening. <laughs> uh, so moved. Right.
All in favor?